Marseille main menu. Mothman Mania is a story from our own Bill Geist, all about the creepy creature who's giving rival phantoms a run for their money. The Loch Ness Monster, the Abominable Snowman, Bigfoot, move over. Mothman is here. We'll travel to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and hear tales of a growing legend that has inspired books, movies, and pizzas later on Sunday morning. Bill Flanagan of MTV treats us to some of the best music of the new season. The Chicago Cubs are now champs. CSI Comes Cold Case premieres CBS tonight after 60 minutes. Although Mothman mania hasn't swept the whole country yet, it is well entrenched in one particular corner of it. So we sent our Bill Geist to investigate. Where the Kanawha River flows into the Ohio sits Point Pleasant, West Virginia. A quiet little town changed forever when folks started seeing things, weird, scary things. That thing jumped on top of the car, squatted and looked like this into the windshield through us. I thought, well, it's just going to reach down and pick me up, and this is it. We looked at it and backed up and then turned and run. It was 80 miles an hour, and that thing was still running beside the car. The story began on November 15, 1966, when two young married couples drove through an abandoned explosives facility and happened upon a seven-foot winged humanoid with two huge glowing red eyes. The thing, dubbed Mothman, created quite a stir. I immediately came here intending to spend like 24 hours. Little did you know. Little did I know that it was like turning into a career for me. <laughs> Journalist John Keel led the howling media pack that set upon Point Pleasant for this real grabber of a story. I met a lot of very believable people here who had seen this thing, some of them fairly close. They said the creature looked a lot like this. A statue of Mothman unveiled recently in downtown Point Pleasant to kick off the Mothman Festival. The town hopes the creature that once scared people off will now bring them in. So far, so good. <coughs> Would you eat that? Me either. And we came all the way from Indiana for this. <laughs> we came from Cincinnati for this. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, very elusive, this Mothman. People come here from uh, London, Germany, Germany uh, Japan. Jeff Wamsley and Donnie Surgent have a whole Mothman industry going. They wrote a book, printed t-shirts, established a website. The townsfolk seem right proud of their Mothman. England has the Loch Ness Monster and we have the Mothman. The first sighting was right in there. Almost all the sightings took place way back in 1966 and 67. That was the big thing to do, just run around and drink beer on the weekends and chase the Mothman. <laughs> Although some sightings continue to this day. Well, I, I saw just red eyes. Just... Only 30 feet above you. Yes, 30 yes, feet above sir. us. My yes. God. Very, we, we, it was well, very... Why didn't you whip out your camera? Well, we were in shock. Interest was rekindled with the publication of John Keel's book, The Mothman Prophecies, followed by last year's movie starring Richard Gere. What do you do when someone comes into your office and tells you they saw this in their backyard? The interesting thing about this case is that most of those who say they saw a Mothman seem to be salt-of-the-earth types who had nothing to gain by telling their stories except embarrassment. There's a lot of people who've seen things up there who've never came to the authorities or, or wanted to say anything about it. You're the first person in the news and I've told this to. Yeah, you have an exclusive on this. <laughs> Back then they made fun of you, you know. Oh my gracious, you know. How many beers did you have? And they're sticking by their stories. I'll take a lie detector test on what I saw. So it's not like you heard somebody else's story? And no, no, this is our story because we saw it. But who is this guy? 
Theories have abounded, a biochemical mutation, a space alien, or perhaps the embodiment of a 200-year-old curse by Shawnee Chief Cornstalk. Well, there are theories that the government used mind control when it's town back in the 60s. The Frick brothers here take an unusual interest in Mothman. We consider ourselves paranormal investigators. This drug and alcohol counselor has her own theory. Well, you know, we're in West Virginia. There could be still somewhere. But my favorite theory comes from this Earthling who spotted spaceships during the Mothman sighting. Well, do you think these ships that Mothman may have been on one of those ships? Could it be? Uh, I tell you, it might have been a pet that got loose from them or something. Or, you know. No. Mothman might have been the pet of one of the aliens? Yeah, it could have been. You know, like we have dogs and cats for pets and things like that. You know, that's just a theory. And a good theory, as good as any. And there was a rash of UFO sightings along with the Mothman encounters. Some even blame Mothman and the UFOs for the collapse of their bridge, which killed 46 people. So I'm gonna come and sit with you. Good for you. Great. The Mothman Festival continued into the night when folks stood in line for hours to take guided hayride tours through the abandoned TNT facility that was Mothman's lair. Uh, I've talked to a few people who Went into the buildings, heard the wings flapping. Oh, really? And a few brave souls went out on their own looking for Mothman, armed only with maps and flashlights. What are those dogs barking at? It was a little scary. What with a huge winged monster out there. Mothman. Here, Mothman. Here, Mothman. Could those be the lights of the UFO they were talking about? Dropping off Mothman? That's ridiculous, but I keep hearing these voices. I know they saw something. What it was, I don't know. It was big. Like it, nothing I've ever seen before. I knew he was for real, whatever he was. And the biggest, reddest eyes you've ever did see. 